Good morning everyone, Kay here on my Tennessee homestead and I have about two hours to whip together my contribution for today's Thanksgiving feast. So come along for the ride. My contribution today is purple hull peas cooked simply with bacon and onion and coriander, salt and pepper. We'll be cooking that and I'm going to make apple pie from my apples that I froze back in October. Don't you just love it when you have food that's just right there in the freezer and you can just thaw it out and quickly make something? And my pie crust recipe comes from Vegetarian Gourmet Cookery. And I've been using this cookbook since the 1970s and I treasure it. I'll be tweaking it a little bit. And also, I'm going to make cornbread. I'm gonna make a small pan uh, in a cast iron skillet because you know there are four of us and cornbread is really not good left over so I'm going to make just enough for the meal. Let's get started. Okay I've got some warm water started in the pan and I'm just going to put my frozen peas in there. This is going to be just about enough water to cover when it's all and I'm just going to let that water get warm again and then we'll add the other ingredients. Okay that's starting to get warm and I'm just going to go ahead and put everything together. This is about a half a cup of onion. Daryl's not a big fan of onion and garlic but uh, <laughs> otherwise I would be putting more. And these, this is three strips of bacon cut into one inch pieces. You could use less, you could use more, you could <laughs> not use any. I just love it. And I'm gonna put half a teaspoon of pepper and salt and coriander. And we're just going to let that come back up to a slow boil. I'll turn it down to simmer. For half an hour it should be done. Okay, moving right along, we are going to make the apple pie filling. I have put the apples in a saucepan and you add two-thirds of a cup of regular sugar. This happens to be raw cane sugar and a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. Add just enough water to cover the apples. And I think since these are frozen, there's gonna be more moisture coming out, and I think that's plenty. Because we're pressed for time, they're gonna thaw out in the cooking process. In addition to the regular sugar and the brown sugar, you add a half a cup of orange juice. And I'm using something a little different because I didn't have orange juice, but it should work great. This recipe is from the Nashville cookbook. Very appropriate, my first Thanksgiving in Tennessee. And this was published, I believe, in 1977. Let me just check, yes. The third printing was 77, the first printing was 76. And I have had, this is my second one because the first one I wore out. Let me just give you a shot of the recipe and that way you can see exactly what the ingredients are. If you wanna freeze the video at this point, then you can copy it down. Meanwhile, the peas are looking great and smell fantastic. I decided to use this cast iron antique muffin pan, cornbread pones, they called them. And I'm gonna use this today because it makes nice individual pieces. And I haven't had a chance to season this, so I'm going to use ghee to keep from sticking. Now I've got the oven going for the pie, but I'm going to put this in 
the oven to warm it up. I find that it works great to warm up your cast iron pan before you put your cornbread in. Just seems to give a kind of a more crusty bottom side. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and mix up the batter for the cornbread. I've got about two-thirds cornmeal to one-third regular flour and um, two teaspoons of baking powder, a pinch of salt, one egg, and milk. And you just put enough milk. I'm going to show you kind of the consistency that you want. We're going to add melted butter. You can also use fat, bacon drippings, lard, you know, melted. I think that looks pretty good. I might put just a wee bit more cornmeal in there. I've never used this pan before, so I don't know exactly how much I need. This should be good. This is a good consistency for your cornbread. Okay, meanwhile, the apples are cooked. And you want to remove those. Okay, now we're going to bring that back up. We're just going to boil that till it thickens slightly. Meanwhile, we're going to fill the corn pone <laughs> pan. I think that's what they used to call this size of cornbread, a corn pone. I thought it might be easier to just put it on this to get it in there. <laughs> You're going to cook that at 425 for about 15 minutes. Okay, meanwhile we're going to whip up the pie crust. We've got our water getting cold. And I've got two and a half cups of flour in here. I'm going to use butter instead of vegetable shortening. I'm trying to get this done fast. And you use one cup of butter. Okay, and then I just work it together with my hands. You can use a pastry cutter for this, but I've always done it this way. Yes, it's messy, <laughs> but supposedly it's flakier than using the cutter. The peas are done, by the way. The cornbread will be done in 10 minutes, but then we have to wait on the pie. You just cut marble-sized pieces of shortening or butter or lard into your flour and salt. One teaspoon of salt, two and a half cups of flour. And when you get it where you don't feel those marble-sized pieces anymore, it feels like it's pretty well worked in. Don't want to overdo it. You make a well and then you put a half cup of cold water in the middle. I would probably be neater if this was a uh, pie contest. <laughs> okay, Let's see if we can get this on the board. Oh, by the way, half of this is going, about a little over half of this is going on the bottom. I'm going to save half of it for the top. I have to have this pie in the oven in <laughs> about five minutes. It's going to be very flaky, hard to hold together. Mm, it's just not holding together, is it? Maybe a little bit more water would have helped. Well, let me work on this for a minute and I'll get back to you. Let's see if we can get this. 
lift it up. If you like your crust thin, you, you need to keep working on it. <laughs> I got to get out the door, so this is going to be a nice thick one. My next crust will look a lot more skillful. Okay, we're going to put some strips on the top. And brush this with egg white. Usually I would make the edges a lot better. Gonna add our apples. Don't really quite have enough apples, do I? I filled that quart bag to the top. Gonna add the syrup. We're going to add the quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon and nutmeg. And then put little dots of butter. Oh, that smells good. All right. Let's try to get some strips put on the top. Here's our cornbread. I'm using the overage to build up the sides of the crust. <laughs> I do believe this is the sloppiest crust I've ever made, but you know what? I think it'll probably taste good. Okay. I don't have enough to go back across the other way. That will have to do. And I'm going to put just a little sugar on there. Okay, I didn't have enough to go back across the other way. <laughs> I kind of made do around the edges that were thin and put a little egg white on top and sprinkled it with sugar and it's going in. The pie is finally in. And we've got to cook for 40 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay, it's gonna make me really late. Hey Daryl, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. What are you doing there? I am chopping up this turkey into pieces, but uh, it's so tender, but it's just falling apart. Oh good, I and, love it that and, way. And the outer edge of the skin is a little, uh, you know, I wouldn't call it burnt, but it's, it's it's crisp. Does yes. it have anything to do with the fact that I'm an hour late? No. Uh, it's, okay. It's just I, I did it at the time I was supposed to do it, but it seemed to have cooked a little more than I wanted. Okay, so. But it's delicious. It's still good. And and what is our, are we sitting down to eat or not yet? Uh, not yet. No. Okay. I've got veggies. Right. That, we've got 20 minutes to go because I'm going to steam these veggies. Okay, great. So. Okay, great. And then uh, you're going to heat up your, what are you going to heat up? I'm going to heat up the stuffing. The, the stuffing, wonderful. What kind of stuffing did you make? It's just bread stuffing with cranberries Ooh. and walnuts. Oh, let me see some light. Oh, okay, great. Fantastic. All right, we'll get a little clip when everything is laid out. Yeah. Hi, Joe. Hi there. Are you having a good Thanksgiving so far? I am having a good time. Good deal. Oh, wow, look at that. Hold on just a second. Then okay. Then. Okay. So, Gosh. is this everything? Wait, wait, wait. Except for my peas. Except for your peas and, and, and cornbread. We can put the peas on the table. Get the cornbread out. Okay, is that it? I think we got it. Okay, so we have the purple hull peas and Denise's stuffing. That's a lot. What is it? Uh, what's in it? 
Yeah, stuffing the, mix. The okay. stuffing mix, and then yeah. celery, onions, and then I put walnuts and cranberries. It sounds wonderful. Dried camp cranberries. And and then Daryl has corn from the garden. Which Frozen you, sweet corn that we heated up. There's my homemade pickles. Oh my goodness. That I grew the, you know, everything here. I grew the dill and the grape leaves and the cucumbers. Oh my goodness. And then we got my yellow beans, those flat potted beans. Okay. And then there's yeah. the salad. Is all that from the garden? This is, well, the sprouts I grew in the kitchen here. The lettuce I just got this morning out of the garden. Wow. The carrots and the celery are just organic, store bought. Uh huh. Broccoli. Broccoli is straight out of the garden. It's still growing out there right now. Today? Yep. And then over here is this um, big thing of greens. We got collards, kale, bok choy, and green peppers in there. Wow. All, all from the garden. Just you know. like stir fried or steamed? Or? They were steamed. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And then you got a big turkey here. We got the turkey, we got the cranberry sauce that Denise made. Homemade cranberry sauce. Wow. And we got the sweet potatoes out of the garden, we forgot to mention. Oh, fantastic. And this is out of and those our are, garden, isn't it? Yes, yeah, And that's what of, Kate brought, yeah. That's out of my garden, those are purple whole peas. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Looks like a feast. In the corn. Oh, bed. and the apple pie. That's and the beautiful. apple pie. Yeah. It's really pretty. It's fantastic. <laughs> I didn't have enough to go back the other way. <laughs> That's pretty, though. It looks good. Okay, let's eat. Ooh, yeah. All right, let's just say happy Thanksgiving to all of my fans and thank them for watching my channel. Yay! Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope you have had, by the time you see this, have had a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless you and and we proceed with our feast. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time. We're talking about sweet potatoes and you were saying that you were going to start yours early this year. Yeah, I usually start them in maybe late January. It seems like most years that worked out pretty good. I did early January last year and that was really my worst year. They just took a long time to start making anything growing out of them. So to be on the safe side this year, I think I'm going to start them in late December. And um, you know, I mean, if you get a whole bunch, like like if you go, if you grow a slip, and and maybe you forget and you let it grow a foot long, well, you can just cut it in half and set those each piece in the water, and they'll both root. I mean, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. sweet potatoes are man, they'll root so easy. So. And, and I didn't always grow them in the jar or on the windowsill, although that method works fine. One year I, I grew them in soil, in a tray, just a, a regular seed tray. And I just placed the bottom cut part, you know, an inch deep in that soil. Hmm. And kept them watered, you gotta keep it wet, you know, keep the soil wet, wet. And they sprouted fine and I got slips that way. And then, this year, this summer, I, I watched a video and a fellow uh, he had it set up, he was doing it also in a seed tray, but instead of soil, he used perlite. No Nothing kidding. but, just perlite. Huh. And you got to keep it wet. But they rooted like crazy in that and sent up plenty of, of yeah. shoots for them. Just so. with water? Just yeah. No nutrition? Right. right. Well, that's how they are on the windowsill, they're just growing in water. Yeah. They're getting nutrition from the root. You know, too. They're using up root energy yeah. to send those shoots up. Huh. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah. And some people don't like the water method on the windowsill. Uh, I've never really had that problem, but I've heard people talking about the water gets all stinky and, well, I mean, you can always change the water, if I, but I've never really had a problem with that. I just, just kind of wash it out. Well, I don't even do that. I mean, the water gets taken down by the plant drawing up and I just add water to keep the water up to the right level. I've, I've never had any problem like that, but, mm -hmm. and, uh, so are you already looking forward to next year? Oh yeah, I'm always thinking about next year. It's, 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 it's already past time to think. I've already ordered some seeds and you know from a catalog. Uh, I don't order too many seeds because I keep my own year to year, but I always like to try a few new things. And yeah. I'm gonna expand my lima bean repertoire next year and get some new ones. I want some of yours, those red ones. Okay, I, I only have a handful. Yeah, okay. Oh, you don't have many seed? No, but okay. that's okay. Well, I'd like to get going with them if I could. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Okay. So. And yeah. I want some of yours too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. And well, you know, this is the time to you know, get out there on a nice day and build a trellis or do some fencing or make a new bed or you know, whatever the weather allows. You don't have to stop gardening just because it's winter time. There's lots that needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs>
If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.